podcast presented by the DraftKings Sportsbook app, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe wherever you get your podcast. Might make more sense if I had my mic near my face. <laughs> yeah, why didn't you tell me? Jeez. Jeez. Did anybody even hear that? Should I start again? <laughs> Oh my gosh. Uh, uh, welcome hilarious. in to the PHX Cardinals podcast pre- presented by the DraftKings Sportsbook Gap. Can you hear me now? Hit the like button, subscribe. Subscribe <laughs> wherever you get your podcast. Leave a five star review. I got a little sidetracked because I'm like so out of my mind happy right now. I'm drinking out of a, uh, a moose cup. Uh, I'm Cherson Sousal. I will remember to have my mic in front of my mouth the rest of the day. Uh, Johnny Venerable, Frank Sanders, Saul whoop, whoop. Bookman back. From becoming a married man officially. Yep. Welcome back. Thank you very much. <laughs> he is out, he is off the market. Yeah. Ladies, you missed your chance. And yeah, just the ladies. <laughs> Pause. 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 It's been a while Pause. since we've done one of these All now. Right. I'm just realizing <laughs> that. All right then. <laughs> Yes. Uh, okay. well, I appreciate that very much. Thank you, everybody. It was Was a, there a, a chance fun... that maybe you for that you didn't have to watch the last two Cardinals games because you were busy doing much better things? Um no, because Monday actually was a down day. It was the only down day we had. Uh unfortunately for me, watching the Rams mm. take it to us. So then I got back and on Sunday I was just, you know, doing some house stuff and that was not as good as well. Nope. So Hopefully now, back in the fold, let's go. You're not allowed to leave the state around. again. Saturday, let's do this. Yeah, it's, it hasn't been a very festive couple of weeks because of the Cardinals stinking up the joint, but we're attempting to change that here. At least the four of us are on the PHNX Cardinal podcast with our with our get up. And at least my approach, I'm trying to will the Cardinals into a Christmas Day victory by slowly becoming Christmas over the next six days. So <laughs> that's... That's what I'm attempting to do. <laughs> Perfect day for me to dress like this. We have another camera now that you can, yes. you can zoom in on me. Uh, Why is this beautiful. the Johnny cam? Is that yeah, all we get today? Yeah, it's somebody Johnny. Shane decided that, well, we don't have a camera operator in That's here. That's horrifying. So it, had to, it had to stick on one person, and Shane decided that that person would be Johnny. Of course yeah. he did. Of course he did. Well, you know, at the end of the day, we all just do our best, right? We just show up and grind, and we do our best. Um Espo's in the our Johnny. Espo is roasting all of us. Yes. Pants painted well, on. My wife told me my pants were too tight when I left the yeah, house. He's today. actually just gone after Johnny and Cheerson so far. Yeah, so far. <laughs> so far. I, I know it's coming my way. So. Espo, uh, please even it up and uh, get Saul and Frank. <laughs> Frank's and got Saul white back. pants on. I have no problem it's wearing white, white pants. It's khaki. We're going to get her some glasses and, a, and we're going to pull a microphone close. White? No, what, no, uh, no white or no khaki? He's white. Those are white. He's a white. It looks white on the screen. In person, they're khaki. In person, I said they were white. <laughs> no, it looks white, white, white on. on the screen. I got my white pants on. No, she says in person it's khaki though. It's that's the pause. It's what? Just, just it's pause. White. Just pause on that. In it's... person, it's khaki. <laughs> I'm one yard away from her. It's... Yard. I'm one yard. <laughs> one yard away from her. <laughs> Espo says you're looking like you just arrived at the Pro Bowl. I think that's kind of pretty accurate. No, you're sure you're absolutely right, brother. You uh, kind of look like you just arrived at the Pro Bowl. Yeah, man, this is a festival moment. You know what it is. He's ready, get down. ready for his Hollywood moment, and yes. I'm really excited for the show today because I uh, probably late to the party on this one, but I connected some dots. So Saturday's game versus the Colts, it's going to mark the third time the Cardinals have played a Christmas Day game. The previous two were against the Dallas Cowboys. The first ever Christmas game, Christmas Day game that the Cardinals were a part of was back in 1995. Person sitting next to me here was on that team. Monday night football. Monday night football game. And that is the same game in which the Rod Tidwell scenes from Jerry Maguire will, were filmed at halftime, which I also just, I mean, I'm late to the party, obviously, but I was really excited when I connected all these dots. Look, it was, uh, hey, Cheerson, I'm Frank. Pleased to meet you. Hi, Frank. Good to uh, meet you. Frank Sanders. Uh, yeah. Um, did you yeah, play for the Cardinals? I did play for the okay. Cardinals uh, during that time. You know, luckily, I got drafted at that time, 1995. Got here, thought it was going to be a great season. I actually turned to be a, what you call that? A, we wet the bed a lot, of, a lot yes. during that year. Um, but one of the coolest things that did happen was the Jerry Maguire um, movie and all the things that came along with it. F- a lot of fun stuff, behind the scene things that, you know, you want to talk about, but 
that'll take up the whole show. But you know, there's a couple of things that you do remember is playing on Christmas. That is a special moment, really. I mean, it really is. That's something that you don't really anticipate ever. Typically, as you as a kid, when you grow up, every holiday game is pretty much solidified by certain teams, and the Cardinals are not one of those teams you ever think about. No. That's a that's a staple for that situation. So having a chance to play against the Dallas Cowboys, um, that was a great moment. But the Rod Tisdale, that that's walking out of the tunnel and seeing the filming happen, happen, you know, right at, right in the middle of halftime. And I thought that was pretty cool. So um, just glad to be on the Cardinals at that time. And unfortunately, we didn't come over with the win that, that, that day either. Um, but I will shout out to Larry Sinners because that, that is one of the most pivotal moments when he jumped over mm. one of the guys in that game. Uh, we gave ourselves a chance, but it just wasn't enough. Uh, that day. I believe it was Darren Woodson that was going in for that low tackle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good call. Iconic jump over him. Yep. It's pretty Former cool. Former Sun Devil. Yeah. Great moment, man. Really great moment. For the Cardinals as, as a whole, it kind of put them on the map, but we were not we were, we were not good at that time. So that that map was a short map. It was probably from here to Maricopa. That's, that's <laughs> about as far as it went. That's, so it. that's a far That's, that's a far my town. Out. Get the, my town out of your mouth. <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> Did people realize and like connect the dots for the next decade plus? I mean, even more than that now. Uh, three decades almost? Yeah, I know. I guess now. Holy cow. 25 uh, years ago. People. Dang, that's so long Yeah, ago. I know, right? I know, right? <laughs> well, 25 years in ago? high school. <laughs> She's like, not a chance. Yeah. Nope. Nobody oh my leaves like 25 years. I mean, yeah, it's Leah's lifetime. That's a long time ago. I was eight. Uh, <laughs> How old were you? Five. Like 95 is four. A four. Four. I was close. <laughs> you were close. Uh, so what I was going to ask, though, did like have people always come up to you and like asked about that game or they didn't connect the dots or what? Never connected the dots. We were such a, I mean, we didn't we didn't have a winning record. And yeah. so it, it, that conversation never really lingered. The movie was great. And the idea that, that because we were not winners at the time and we were in Arizona, which which most of the games were kind of blacked out, un- unfortunately, during that time. Um, Rob Moore was the Cuba Gooden of that situation. And his scenario was similar in some 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 instances, but of course Hollywood doctored it up with Cuba, which made it great. Um, he was a free agent. He was trying to figure out where his money was going to go. He was coming out of the Jets. He had had a Pro Bowl season his sophomore year. Um, he was a tall, you know, physical receiver, but he was just really good. Personality 100% totally opposite. As cool as the other side of the pillow, like just chill 100%, not a Rod Tiswell, uh, Tiswell, not not at all, just not that type of guy. But being in that situation and seeing it manifest in, on the screen, how they did it, it turned out to be pretty good. I do get some questions, but that's not me. It's, it's Rob Moore's story, and, and Hollywood did a good job with it. Him and Cuba actually was on the cover of GQ. They took a picture a while back during that time, and uh, they kind of similar in a, lot of, in a lot of areas physically, but personality-wise, night and day. Can you be seen anywhere in it? Not at all. Dang it. Unfortunately. That's the, hard part. That's the yeah. hard part. Yeah, that's, I mean, yeah. Everything else that would happen when, when they were filming stuff and when we had practice, there would be a bunch of guys out in Cardinal uniforms mm-hmm. or something like that. And it would be like only a third of the offensive, you know, you would see just a half half of the football field. You wouldn't see all of the football field. You'd see a couple of players that were stunt guys that were doing things that was just, you know, pretty ridiculous. Some of our, our football field, excuse me, mm-hmm. our football field had like, you know, props that it looked like the Philadelphia Eagles. And then they put like, they had like foam and snow up against the prop, making it like it was cold, but it was. <laughs> while you were practicing? I mean, yeah, while we were practicing. So on field one, they had that that field taken up, taken advantage of. And we would go to field two and three at the time of, at, you know, at, at on Hardy at the uh, Tempe facilities. And it was, it was you, you just walk by it. And then when we had certain guys walk through the locker room, you know, I, I, I saw, I didn't actually meet him. But I saw Tom, you know, I, so. Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise from that standpoint. I almost said Hanks, but no, sorry. <laughs> and Tom Cruise is like Johnny's side. 100%. We're very, right? we're very oh, similar. Yeah. Very similar in, in looks, and appearances. Looks, appearances. Bank That's account. not true at all. <laughs> Bank um, accounts about yeah. the same. Yes. Petite, you know. Uh, yes. Small, but you know, very, yeah. just very elite at our crafts, but go ahead very, and continue. Very elite. <laughs> very elite. Very good statement. Very elite at the craft. <laughs> but uh, I did see him. Uh, he came through the locker room and. Uh, he waved at several guys, but they kind of rushed him out and whatnot. But it was it's just a cool moment, you know, just um, unfortunately, I think that's the part. Like, you know, you think about, you know, being like, even if you're even if you're a guy in a movie and you're not but you're on the set, but you're not that guy. 
you kind of don't get the same kind of feeling mm -hmm. of it. And that's kind of how it felt, you know, being in that moment. It felt like we were there, but I wasn't getting the feel of it because it really wasn't about me. Yeah. And they did a good job of Hollywooding up. So I marvel just as much as anybody else do about the movie and it being part of the Cardinals and I happened to be there in 95. Were you ever like start? So I feel like I could see the dynamic of like, there's just like, uh, like movie stars in your locker room and on your practice field, but then you guys are stars in your own right. Like, was it just like, oh, that's Tom Cruise and oh, that's Aeneas Williams? Like, I mean, were you guys like starstruck by I each think, other? I think stars are still starstruck struck by other yeah? stars. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, sure. I, I walk. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, that's the craziest thing is that th we're just as timid to walk up to them as they are to walk up to us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which is crazy. Like, it's like you would think, well, you don't think. You just it's, it's stupid because you give them their place, they give you your place, yeah. and then you try to respect each other's place because it's really not the same. Like, it's just, it's not the same. I'm in an arena doing what I'm doing. He's on a fictitious set that's made to allow the movie to happen. And then after that, he's done. You know, and I think that's kind of, <laughs> it's crazy. It's how I feel here. You know what I'm saying? I feel like I'm among stars and I feel, I mean, yes. I, I literally feel starstruck when I walk in his room, you walk in looking elegant and beautiful and Johnny <laughs> walks in looking like JV does, always amazing. And then <laughs> so, <laughs> so. Let me tell you yes. something, America. <laughs> tell America this what you're doing. This right is now. all for you. We do this all for you. This is everybody <laughs> thinks that this is we come on here and it's like fancy shit. No, we get after it, and this is important. And a lot of thought. It's meticulous that goes into doing yes. this. So I don't just throw this home. I just throw this together. Why does it look like you're on the European cam right now. Like it's just like kind of fuzzy and you're. These it's antlers like make my head look really big too, and I'm like my I look super pale. You look great. This is a bad. You it's a bad great, look. Bro. Courtesy look of Shane. Okay, the courtesy of Shane, he's over there rolling 100 percent right now. But it's a uh, you know, all these things happening at the end of the day. I mean, I think that is um, I think that's the respect factor of it. At, at the end of the day, is that you really still kind of, you know, you, you you meet people and you still got to give them what they did and how they impacted your life. And so, therefore, it made a Was this your Twizzlers? Absolutely not. That's yours, boo. That's yours. It's just sitting there. You got to make, make it disappear. Take over, Jay. Have, have, a, have some fun with it. What are you drinking? Maple candy? Or... Coffee. No, just some, some uh, chai tea latte mm. for your boy. For Picked your boy. Up. Mm. You know, you got a couple kids at home. Dragon at the end of the day. But we rally like we do. Will the Cardinals rally? This coming Sunday against the Indianapolis Colts. Let's transition to well, that. Well, let's if we set could. the scene here as we talk about how big of a deal. Well, I'm, I'm eating this candy. <laughs> <laughs> you know who's not going to stop Jonathan Taylor? The Cardinals' offensive line. Mm. Did you see that tweet today? I Whoa. didn't see that. Kyler had bought you know his, yeah. his whole his whole offensive line some golf bags. Yeah, yeah. they're pretty sweet looking are, golf yeah. bags. Why, too. Yeah, like, damn. He things. just bought them golf bags. Golf bags. They got them golf, uh, some golf gear, and then there was uh, so something there was else. a custom fitted club. Yes, custom fitted club, like the whole nine. Yeah, yeah. And the first comment underneath is, uh, "They got to face Jonathan Taylor this weekend, but this is what they're worried about." <laughs> and I'm like, "Bro, what? Like, Yikes! Like what? You know, if we had, you know, we're about to have a sponsor. Yeah, here coming Ooh. up soon. Yeah, we we actually shout out to Max Simpson for closing this first deal. Breaking but, news." Uh, no, no, I can't oh. say who it is yet because we have job, to, you know, we gotta put the ink on the paper. But nice. uh, Love it, it's an anti-bullying thing, and oh. I swear that would be the first tweet we ever put up. Like, <laughs> dude, be better than that. Yeah, be better. Than That's that. right. Be nice. Yeah, it's like normal, typical, every day. They are humans too. Yes. They're not gonna like just like not live their lives and act like this isn't a thing. Uh, and the, all the only thing that matters in life is this game. Uh, <clears throat> all right, let's set the scene here. You talked about how important Christmas days are. Only the th day games are oh, only three. This is the third one in the history of the franchise. Let's set the tone for what this game could mean for the Cardinals. Anyone? Uh, anyone want to talk here? Yeah, I'll, I'll talk. I'll talk about. It. I guess I have to look toward this camera now. I was thinking about this on my drive home or my drive to work today, and I think it's it's kind of poetic on on Saturday night. I'm gonna set the scene for everybody, so the Cardinals can can essentially feed into the national narrative as it pertains to them, or they they can slay a bunch of demons on Saturday night. So when you think <laughs> we, we, we got somebody spamming the chat. <laughs> What's going on in the chat? 
Uh, Dad, get out of the chat. All right. <laughs> All right. So here, a strip I'm, club I'm be, uh, obviously, I'll be, all of a sudden <laughs> appeared in the chat. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna. Uh, all right, I this is. I really thought it long and hard about this. So Sorry, let's, the stage yeah. is yours. <laughs> I lost it there for a second. <laughs> all right, which camera? This camera? Regular, regular. Act like you've been here before. Regular Johnny. style. Oh my god, I'm like, Cheerson's gonna let me have it after the fact. All right, so the the Cardinals are playing the Colts. The Colts might be the most physical team in the NFL based on their offensive and defensive line. Everybody assumes that the Cardinals are a finesse team, right? Especially after what we've seen the last two weeks. They're soft. They're folding down the stretch. They have an opportunity to not only go up against the most, I think they're the most like blue-collar physical team, not blue-collar in terms of like the community, but just how they play. They don't get great quarterback play, right? Frank Wright is the opposite of Cliff Kingsbury. He's like anti-sexy. He was the second choice after Josh McDaniels left that job. Everybody loves Frank Wright, right? He got to the playoffs with Phillip Rivers. Then you have the Cardinals with Cliff. I love Frank Wright. Yeah, and then you have the Cardinals with with Cliff, and everybody thinks entitled. They're blowing it. So you have that factor playing into this game. Then you also think about okay, they can't win on national TV, right? How many straight national TV games have they lost? I would argue this is one of the biggest national TV games of the year. You get the night game of Christmas when everybody's going to be home, everybody's going to be watching. And then lastly, the coup de gras is they can't win at home now. They can't win at home. They've lost three straight games at home. Uh, embarrassing fashion, Carolina, the Packers, the LA Rams. So you've got all that on the line. So you can either tuck your tail between your legs or they have an opportunity with just a win on Saturday night to to slay all of those narratives. I will say this. I think this is the most important game in the Cliff Kingsbury era. I I hope I said that right. You did, yeah. Um, Just because I, I do not like the thought of them dropping this one, going to Dallas... To face that team who still has plenty to play for. Yeah. And then having to come back against Seattle at home, considering how poorly you have played at home, um, with potentially everything on the line. Like, you just don't want to get to that scenario. Now, I happen to think that the Cardinals are going to clinch whether they lose out or not, because mm-hmm. I feel like, you know, er- other teams are going to lose and it's going to cause that to happen. Yeah. But for the Cardinals to get back to where they need to be, and we're talking about Super Bowl contention. They have to win this game. They got to get their mojo back because if they don't win this game, oh shit, <laughs> that's it. Yep, that's the mood well, across the whole state. We did a poll post game show on Sunday, basically on the PHNX Cardinal Twitter. How many people think the Cardinals are going to lose out? And it was over half of the group. Now it was reactionary. They had just gotten blown out by the Lions. I think by the time it ended, it was like fifty-one percent thought that they would win another game, and forty-nine said no. So even by the win you know, one within more twenty-four game. hours, yeah, that poll still was basically fifty-fifty. The biggest thing for me is you started the season seven and zero, oh, and there's a there's a decent chance now you don't even win your division. Like that is putrid, especially when you consider like you've beaten the Rams already once. You've you tried to build up so much collateral, and we talked about it last week, where they're like sitting guys and they're being patient, and a lot of their moves were were made like January football in mind. Well, you gotta close the season at some point. There's still a month of games to be left to to play, and they walked off that plane in Detroit, and and they thought the Lions apparently they didn't watch one damn thing of film all year on the Lions because that's how the Lions play every week with or without talent. Practice squad guys, Cliff and sure. Kyler Murray thought that they could just roll into that game. And I love both of them. And just the Lions were just going to roll over. And that's not what happens in the NFL. Before we continue on, Johnny, have you taken a look at the DraftKings Sportsbook app? They they opened the week one-point favorite. Yes. Has that changed? So it was upwards of two the last time I checked, which is absurd. Like, I don't know. If you're a casual fan— they're uh, it's still it's back to one. Yeah. I, I just I don't know if that's like travel or what, but based on what the Colts just did to the New England Patriots and how bad the Cardinals have looked, I think that's Vegas's way of, of saying they want people to bet on on the Cardinals, maybe. So they I don't I don't know the rationale behind that. So what I'm getting at here is um we're, we're trying to segue into the drafting sportsbook app pick of the week. Yes. Here. So can you enlighten uh, us? Yes, I, I sure can. Yeah, so my DraftKings pick of the week is is not the Cardinals. Um, they are one point uh, underdog or one point. So for- you don't want to touch this game? No, I don't think so. What were you going to say, Saul? The Cardinals are going to destroy the Colts, mm. flat out. They're going to destroy the Colts. That's your pick of the week because they're a one trick pony. They are, the and Colts I know are- they're really good, and they're really good at controlling the ball. They're going to destroy the Colts. They're going to come out with their hair on fire. 
determined to stop the run, and Carson Wentz couldn't throw a rock in the ocean. So I think the Cardinal. I think Kyler Murray is going to snap out of this whatever the hell is going on with him. Okay. And I think they're going to destroy the Colts on national TV and break the narrative. And then all of a sudden, everybody's going to be back on board. With everybody's the everything. Everything will be fine. Uh, that's interesting. I do not agree. I, w- I would love for that to happen. Mine is uh, the Green Bay Packers, who I think right now are the best team in the NFL. They're a uh, seven-point favorite hosting Cleveland with, you know, Nick Mullins and Case Keenum. And Packers Packers are elite, as much as I hate to say it. So I like the Packers minus seven. That's my pick of the week. Well, if you download the DraftKings Sportsbook app using the code PHNX, bet a dollar on any team to score in a game. You can win $100 in free bets. If they score, you score. Again, using that promo code PHNX on the DraftKings Sportsbook app, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. But as always, it is 21 and over, Arizona only. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP. New customers only. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com slash sportsbook for details. All right. So let's get back to Saul's thoughts on this. I said after the game, I feel like I probably would have had that mindset, like they're going to come out and and crush the Colts until I had that mindset that they were going to come out and crush the Lions. And now I'm all confused and I don't know what to think about this team anymore. For all the reasons that Johnny mentioned, uh, on paper, everything's against the Cardinals. I don't care what their record is. I don't care what's good, what the Colts are good and bad about. The fact of the matter is they've played teams at every caliber at home and on prime time, and have not gotten out to a good start, have played from behind, and ultimately lost all three of their last games that they've played at home, and the only two games they've played in prime time previously. So I don't know what to think. I don't know where your confidence is coming from, unless it's just simply that you have a lack of confidence in the Colts. Well, I didn't really feel strong about the Lions game anyway. Like, that 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 for sure. Like, I don't know what to think about the Lions. I didn't, I didn't know what to think about the Lions going into that game. I knew they played hard. Yeah, And I knew if the Cardinals didn't come ready to play, this could be the result. Now, I didn't yeah. think it was going to be as bad as that, but I definitely could see a scenario where the Cardinals could screw around and lose by a field goal or something like that against the Detroit Lions. They now, lost by 18. They, lo- oh, they got their asses handed It wasn't even close. Sure. It wasn't, it wasn't even close. Even. Like, since the first quarter, it wasn't yeah. even close, right? You could tell that those guys weren't ready. But as my man right here will, will tell you, there's a lot of pride with these professionals. And when they get their ass handed to them on national TV – it's it's not fun. They did it against the Rams. Now they then they go on the road against the Lions. Now they're like the laughing stock of the NFL because everybody that was doubting them from the jump was like, "See, told you, frauds." I guarantee you, they're starting to hear that noise and they're like, "All right, we, we if if anything, they're gonna come out and play with their hair on fire on Saturday, whether they win or lose. I don't know. I feel confident in saying that they're gonna come out. I think Cliff Kingsbury has had awful games at home, all the way across the board. Yeah. Um, and I think that that will change. I do think Cliff will change that narrative this Saturday. I am. I'm Spencer 76 at believe, and I'm trying to, I'm, I'm really trying to, I mean, since the break or just before, since the break we've had, um, we've come back with a real boring offense and it hasn't been amazing at all. We went to Chicago, beat them, but it was one nothing special. The defense, really. I mean, right, with yeah. the defense. So the Turnover. offense did nothing Andy, special. It was Andy so, Dalton giving yeah, the ball I mean, away. But that's what I'm saying. So we did nothing special. So and I, I agree with you that I said that watching the Lions play, once a team gets – once the NFL team gets one win, they figured out something. It took them 10 weeks to figure it out, but they figured out something. First the Minnesota Vikings, and they got a win, and then they came back. And so the next week, I agree with Johnny. Johnny said that that was the same rad, bull, BS team that had been playing all 11 weeks, and it was offensively and defense they looked exactly the same and they gotten beaten we just did not show up to play it and but they didn't. were close so many games they yeah. were they should they have beaten the ravens so many yeah. games but yeah but when you're a loser because i've lost a lot in the nfl yeah <laughs> when you got enough losers on your team they don't know how to win they don't know how to close a game mm. they don't know how to finish a game and that's the part where the better teams know how to finish games and walk away with a win at the end of the game we can watch we can point out many reference points to the nfl all last week and say this guy's a winner. He, he figured out he figured out how to win the ball game. Get it to his guys. Figure it out. So to me, I'm in the 50-50 window between believing and not believing. But I want to believe this. I want to believe that Cliff will do something differently offensively. That he will come to coach, and we can have a conversation like what what K one said at, after the Rams game. This is the best game plan I've had all year. Like, don't just leave it up to the talent. 
You got to coach the talent. And sometimes you got to put the talent in the right spot consistently. Take away Kyler's option on all the field. Make it where it's one side of the field or one third of the field or one or two guys. And if you don't like that run, Kyler has no rushing yards this year. The RP offense is dead. This is a passing offense that hands the ball off to a dive or option two or a little, a little quick pitch out to one of the running backs. This is not an RP offense. That's not a threat no more. So teams don't even take that. Yeah. And so that's what's dead in our offense. This is not a run pass. This is all pass or you're going to hand the ball off. I, and that's been the sad part of watching where we've come from because the first seven weeks, we did that. We had the RPO. Kyle would run, slide, get up, come back, then make a throw or run a uh, uh, threaten it. And then we got Hurts. And then it was like, oh, we don't know what to do now. We got Hurts. We don't know. What, we don't run the RPO offense no more. And it's it just doesn't look like the team – that was the first seven weeks at all, but consistently. They, they have run the RPO, and it just hasn't been effective. Have they figured? Have teams figured out how to defend that better, or I mean, is it just, something of just is Kyler lacking explosiveness? I think like first to, play, first play of the game, they tried to do a QB Kyler run last week, yeah, and it just, didn't go anywhere. I mean, yeah, but that's then, because uh, you don't uh, do the, it. the linebacker uh, for the for the Lions, um, fifty three. Yeah, can't remember. yeah, I know he was all over Kyler yeah. all game long. Like he had no, ch- and you well, haven't seen that too many times in the past with Kyler. Like he's typically able to get away from those linebackers to a degree, not De- this game. Detroit's defensive staff, I think their coordinator, and correct me if I'm wrong, people in the chat, came from Los Angeles, and they defend Kyler really well. Uh, the Lions have the personnel. I mean, they've, they've shut down Kyler two seasons in a row, as crazy as that sounds. So, mm-hmm. And Kyler had some success on, on the ground against the, the Bears. Yeah, I think with two rushing touchdowns, Yeah, that's right? the game that I immediately thought of right after his first game back from injury they did do that and he ran the ball I mean he even I don't know what his stats were but he didn't even throw the ball that much and they had success with it I think just for me the, he had the, tiny hands and he couldn't handle the wet ball yeah that's that's why. Why. I'm definitely that Sometimes definitely plays a part in it balls. for me the biggest thing is I we we have anointed I I have anointed Kyler we have anointed Kyler as a as a community and a, a fandom as a top five to seven quarterback and you just you get to the this point in the year you can't be losing to jared goff and the one in 11 lions like if you're kyler murray and you're like everybody I, I can see why it gets a little frustrating from a national perspective to hear about the cardinals and kyler being the mvp when they're under 500 historically in december they're five and nine as as a group he and king kingsbury the tandem of the two of them are under 500 and his, and his numbers aren't great so until that changes it just we keep trying to want it into existence, but it has to happen organically. Like that, he has to go on some. We've been fooled now. At least I've been fooled the past two starts to the year, thinking this team was better than they are. I still think this team can be good, but it they fall when they fall off, they fall off hard. And we saw it last year. They were favored going into the final two games of the season against backup quarterbacks on national TV. And, and stunk it up. And Michael Bidwell, they came out, they said, that's not good enough. They brought in J.J. Watt. They brought in all these, all these other personalities. And through two months of the season, it looked like it was working. And now it just, they're three and four in their last seven games. It's just, this is not a small sample size anymore. I fear that they don't have the maturity to get past a moment like this. J.J. Watt is still out. We don't know if Rodney Hudson is going to be back. You don't have DeAndre Hopkins. We're not sure if Kyler Murray has matured into the type of leader that he needs to be. And, you know, it it takes right now, we've talked about it since that loss, like guys have to step up and who are those guys? And I I feel like something that may have happened while they were down, you know, to to the Lions was, oh, shit, we're losing right now to the freaking one win Detroit Lions. And they let it get to them. You could definitely see the frustration from every single player out there. Mm-hmm. And I hope that this does it. They don't, they, they said, oh shit. And it let, it, it got to their heads a little bit. It was what it seemed like. And I hope that they're not saying, oh shit, all week long and get to the game on Saturday and they're not thinking straight and there's the same, they're trying to do too much and they get out and say, we can't lose this, we can't lose this. And if they do get down, do they still have that mentality where they're just, the, the maturity and the leadership isn't there? I worry, and I'll pose the question to you guys, like, do they, do they have enough alphas on this team? Like I, that's a legitimate concern of mine where not only from a leadership standpoint, but guys just willing them saying, we're not losing this game. We're better than these guys. I think they've only got maybe two or three of those guys that you can name. Well, I'll say this. And we've 
people have talked about this at at length, and I know you guys have probably touched on it as well. But um, Kyler and and his demeanor, um, you know, people have been speaking about that all season about you know watching him on the sidelines and his little his whole know, career, you know, his whole career. Yeah, for sure. When when things start to fall apart like this, I mean, for lack of a better word, motherfucker, you better pick it up. Yeah. Like seriously. Like you better pull it together and find a way to lead these dudes because you're the guy that can change everything. Yep. Like if you come out there and be like, dude, these dudes ain't beating us, that ain't happening. Like, and you ball out, everybody else will follow. But if you start sulking and looking like you're like, oh, it's not working out for me, dude, you can go fuck off. It's the, it's the Jay, it's the Jay Cutler syndrome, and it like it's gotten worse and worse as the season. You, it's an immensely talented player, man, just he, like Jay he, Cutler. You said Jay Cutler, bro. That, that was the same. It was true. just the same thing with Jay Cutler. The same thing, different I mean, version. You're not I, the I, same player. When you said it, I saw it. Yeah, and that's what threw me. Like that's a, I mean, that's a great reference. That's not somebody that you. But want I didn't to want be. to be. I didn't yeah. want that reference point. I thought that's a great reference. Point. We want Russell Wilson. That's who Kyler Damn. compared to when he was coming out. Russell Wilson is a a special human being, a special leader, and wise beyond his years when he came into the NFL. Now he played longer at the college level. I think he had five years between his time at NC State and Wisconsin. But he just he was an he's an outlier, right? And so then you have Kyler, and then like you go like. I don't want to go back in time, but that like Dan Patrick interview, like that scared me. And then you, we just get sucked in with the elite play and well, let's give him some time to take care of itself. And then it's just like, we can't have what we had happen on Sunday. Just can't happen. As an NFL quarterback, you can't be a front runner. As Why are you laughing? <laughs> He's getting really pissed off and his antlers are shaking. <laughs> when I get upset, my aunt, my antlers start to, you know, they got a mind of their own. Oh, no. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> He's like, we can't have that. His <laughs> antlers are <laughs> oh, Listen, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. I hope Kyler sees this. No. He's like, who's this dude well, with the We'll never get him in studio as a result. Burn this tape. <laughs> <laughs> but like I said, you can't be a front or front runner if you're a quarterback in the NFL. Not if you want to lead a team to a championship. You just can't. You got to find a way. Listen, as a as an athlete, way back in the day, and you, you guys have all played sports. You know, like, hey, every now and then you have a bad day, yeah. And yeah. sometimes you want to point the finger at other people because you're like, oh, you should have done this, should have done this. Like at some point, you just got to say, you know what? How can I help them? How can I pick my own game up? and raise their level along with me. That's what I have to focus on, and that's what Kyler has to do this week. Yep. I think he will, but, man, he got kicked in the teeth two weeks in a row, mm -hmm. and he had to learn some hard lessons to get to this point. I hope this isn't the third week in a row he has to learn a hard lesson. Uh, I was going to say I agree. Uh, somebody in the chat here saying Rodney Hudson, in my opinion, need to get him back ASAP for line calls and such. John... It, uh, in the chat thank you for making that comment because i i think that jonathan taylor you might say that they're one one trick pony but in order to stop them you need to be at full strength in my opinion uh and i think they definitely need rodney hudson i'm going to be a little scared if they enter saturday and right now he's still in covid protocols if they don't have him if they come out throwing the ball the way they the the, the cardinals i'm talking about come out throwing the ball and Run and gunning them out. Like, let's say they jump out to a 14 point lead. Well, that running game starts to be less and less effective. That's exactly my point. You can equalize that more so. What you can't have happen is what has had happened in most of the Cardinal losses this year. Offense goes three and out, they look dejected, and then the Colts can just ease in seven, eight play drives. That freaking Lions drive to start the game last week, good hell, eight minutes. That was like death by a thousand cuts from Jared Goff. So if the Cardinals come out and they're putting after after three plays and they they just they can't pick up first downs, really to me, like I know it'll be the narrative will be all week. Can the Cardinals stop the run? I, I like it's not well, a Well, I just think that if it gets to a scenario where they're not stopping the run and and they're, you know, putting points on the board, the Cardinals need to obviously be able to counter that. And I think yeah. in order to be able to counter that, you need your your center back. Yeah, they're they're in big trouble the if he doesn't play. Making. It's obvious the games he does play to, to the games he doesn't play. I like the game plan, and I think that we will come out and try to be just as physical as they as they are. I like to think that that's the mindset that we will have 
coming out in the situation. There's so many shenanigans. We always I talk about being a young team. I say this all the time. There's so many shenanigans at home right now that's taking place. The holidays, the you know, trips to families coming in, Christmas shopping, presents, all these things that are taking place. Hopefully on on Saturday, none of this stuff really matters. And the guys want to get out and prove to themselves that, you know what, we need to get back on this. We need to get back on the winning, winning bus, feel, figure out what this feels like, um, the leadership that needs to be there, the plays that has to happen. I believe these guys, we got the talent to make it happen. I just believe that this game right here would be something that will, will honestly be what you said earlier. This would be one of the biggest testaments for Cliff Kingsbury because this would be the best chess match of a coach, him, and Vance Jones will have in regards to making – setting your team up with the ability to stop not just to run because when you have a good running team most teams that we've figured out the last couple of weeks that have ran the ball against us very well they ran play action mm -hmm. and play action gave them over the top the rams did the exact same thing gave them over the top pass down down the field lions did the exact same thing hit him on a bang eight which is a post for a touchdown all because you're afraid of the run if we keep telling if they go and believe they have to stop the run then the pass is going to happen and then that that's going to put us in a position where we will be behind so it, it, it's going to take a good game plan, get the guys back healthy. But I agree, like, we're pros. We're supposed to figure this, figure it out and then come to work to perform. Yeah. Despite anything, Christmas doesn't happen. If you're a player, Christmas doesn't happen anytime this week. Not at all. This is not even a Christmas moment. I'm not shopping for no presents. I'm not doing nothing. All I'm, all I'm focused on right now is this game. I'll get done with the game. On Sunday, we'll talk about Christmas. But I'm not worried about this. I don't even do Christmas in my house when we got a game like this. I, would, I wouldn't even do it. So the guys will be focused, but the idea is that will they be in the best position um, to show up on, on live TV again when they get a chance to prove that they honestly can be one of the best teams in the NFL. Well, we're going to get to the chat here in a second, but uh, we will be doing Christmas, and we will be doing it out at Westgate and the Lola because we've got another – tailgate for you christmas day tailgate and we're changing things up a little bit compared to our previous tailgates ten dollars gets you in the door to this one then we've got a 35 dollar all you can eat christmas buffet 50 dollars all you can drink package we do um, have a graphic I, I believe we we do have a graphic yeah no oh well okay well, you uh, keep talking no <laughs> graphic but uh we will continue to give you the deets uh once again, uh, $10 gets you in the door, $35 Christmas buffet, $50 all you can drink. We'll be hanging out there again at the Lola. It's always a good time. And um, I'm looking forward to it, even I'm, though I'm I will join you guys. Cardinals virtually. update. I know where you're coming from. I promise it is not on the Lola for the Cardinals, you know, wet in the bed on prime time. They make it better. Wouldn't you rather be amongst friends eating and drinking, and having a good time? I the worst thing is watching a game like that at home, like the Rams and the and the Packer game al home alone, and just like stewing in your own depression because the Cardinals played like garbage. Come out and hang out with us uh, at the Lola for what I think is going to be a, just a celebration, hopefully of not only you know Bergang travel, PHNX, but a, a Cardinal season playoffs. Can we get a can we get a playoff berth at the Lola? Once this year, we've tried how many times? Some people are beginning to think that we actually have a, a curse going on. Mm. And because every time we are out at the Lola, the Cardinals have lost. So we also need to make sure that we put that to rest. Yes. We've got a bad streak of our own going on. I Anybody who's been to any of our tailgates know definitively that we are the solution. We are not the okay. problem. Okay. Yeah. That's all you need to say. Yep. That's very true. <laughs> I love the Lola. I'm just going to drop that out there, man. We have <laughs> such a great time. The music is always fire. I'm going to tell you guys again, when you show up, the alcohol is not that well whiskey, not that well vodka, not well tequila. It is delicious. Tito's, Ciroc. You know I mean, I, I got Hennessy last time. I'm not selling you on foolishness. The food is delicious. It's great. I mean, the only thing that you really might have to come out of pocket for is a Red Bull. Yes, thank That's you for it. buying all my Red That's Bulls. It. It. You would know that. <laughs> you might have to come out of pocket for a Red Bull for two dollars, but it's worth it. It's a great time. The music is fire. The people are great. The staff is always friendly and happy. You just can't beat it. If you don't have anything to do, or if you you should be doing that, on right, come hang out with us, man. Let's sign some autographs, take some pictures, celebrate. Let's cheers to a great season. All that we that we've had thus far. I mean, you haven't seen the Cardinals at ten wins in a long time, so this is a great time. Great. You still got so many things to be thankful for, and so many things to celebrate. And, I, and you still got to, what, believe that this team will get us into the playoffs and then we one day will be holding a Vince Lombardi trophy because this team got the talent to make that happen. This is a 12-win football team. 
Two more, two more W's in the next four weeks. Yep. Twelve win football team. in the next three weeks. Let's that go. somebody posed the question earlier and asked, "What would make it a success? Like, how many games do the Cardinals have to win to close out the season to consider it?" A su- I would say two out of three. That to me is acceptable. Yep. I would say, okay, that was successful. They got on the right track. They've got some momentum now heading into the postseason. Two out of three, in my opinion. You got, you got to make up for that Panthers and Lions loss. Yep, you got to. So you beat you do that by beating the the Colts and then you turn around and beat the Cowboys and sweep Dallas back to that shitty city and then you go and finish off the Seahawks. You finish up with thirteen wins, everybody's happy. I thought we talked I thought you just said twelve wins. Well twelve is the gar- is the goal, yeah. It's the I goal. Want twelve. Oh, okay. But if we get thirteen, I'll be even happier. <laughs> <laughs> well, Fitz Wade brings up a good question. Why has the offensive staff completely abandoned Andy Isabella? And I say that's a good question because Rondale Moore, his status is currently up in the air. So we might be seeing Andy Isabella like we saw at the end of this game against the Lions <laughs> if he has to step in. The ears are shaking. <laughs> uh, well, he, they don't they don't play him, my man, because he isn't any good. Uh, and again, they kept him around because of injuries. Injuries happen. Rondell Moore may or may not play, although Kingsbury is hoping that he gets some work in later this week. Love Andy. All around great guy. Before the Chicago game, he was out there warming up 9 a.m., three hours before kickoff, raining. It was it was awful outside. He wants to be better. He just I, I just at the end of the day, I just don't think he's a starting NFL player. I think it's in I think it's the mentals for him. I think he makes some like mental mistakes because he hasn't had enough reps really. Okay. And I've defended him the entire time saying that he needs to go somewhere where he can actually get playing time if he's ever going to get better. Uh, because once you're out there with the bright lights, a guy that by all means probably at least heading into his collegiate career, the chance of him making the National Football League outside of reasons of his speed uh, were probably kind of slim. So it's, yeah. it's a big deal for him to even be out there. I think he just has like this mental block when he does get out there where he just does some either dropped passes or he, he, he doesn't run the right. I mean, I feel like he makes mental mistakes. Everything you said is the reason why he's not on the field. That's just right. flat, flat out. It's the reason why not on the field. Well, what if a, he's going to have to be on the field? Look, not, if he has to be on the field, then we have to accept the fact that he's going to make mental mistakes and look bad. And we got to be like, where's Andy Isabella? And the quarterback's going to figure out where he's at to get the ball to him. That's the stuff you don't want to happen. Unfortunately, look, the NFL does this one thing extremely well. They keep drafting players, and the players they draft, they want to see if you're going to stand the test to beating him out. Rondell Moore showed up. He looks electrifying. He looks amazing. He looks like I got speed on days, ready to just burst and do something amazing, and you look like you're just not that dude yet. And then you still got, when you look in the room of the players that's there, you got to ask yourself, should I be in this room? Let me just say this here. I, I believe Andy Isabella will probably get picked up by somebody, and they're going to put him in. They're going to dump him in there like, you know, like Cooper Cup. He's going to figure something out. They're going to give him a couple of option routes. He's, he's going to look amazing. He's a patriot. And, and it, it, he's a patriot. And, and he's going to be amazing. And he's going to they're going to dump the ball off to him. He's going to be a scat little guy. He's going to get up the field and, and make it. And we're going to be like, why didn't we keep Andy Isabella? You know what? Because we got A.J. Green, who's six foot three. We got D. Hops, who's got hands that's the size of a goddamn basketball. You know, we got Christian Kirk, who might be here, might not be here. We got Rondell Moore, and we got a we got a badass tight end. So when you look at our, when you look at our, our, our receiving core, we have room for him. We just don't have room for him now. It would be nice if they did, if he was amazing on special teams. But apparently, they got somebody else to do that. And he's still, you know, I don't take anything away from him because the NFL is always about one coach who finds a way to fit you into their system. If they find a way to fit him into the system the right way. He's going to be amazing someplace else, probably. I'm about to say something that you guys might not like, but I'm not on the Rondale Moore train like everybody else. Well, I, he's I hit feel a rookie like he's wall. been incredibly overhyped. Um, you know, his punt returns, <laughs> not a fan. Um, he catches balls sometimes in open space, and he, so every now and then he shows you a little a flash, and that's what everybody gets excited about. Yeah. But there's a lot of times where he can't make people miss. And I'm like, all right, well, what are we talking He's about? He's had a here? couple of really nice catches as well, though, like toes just inside. I I don't think they use them vertically. They're far between. They don't use them vertically enough. Uh, they, they did yes, early in the season, don't. and they do too much gimmick shit with him now. Yes. And then I think that decreases his confidence. Let him rip it downfield. And really, I mean, like AJ and Kirk, Kirk's a deep threat, but AJ's older. He's a possession receiver. Like Rondell Moore's fastest dude on the offense easily. 
And so I, I, I would like to see him exploit secondaries like he did earlier in the season. I John brings up a good point. I'd maybe put Andy and Eno in there on special teams and protect more. So if he is good to go, I would be fine with I feel like I mean Andy's uh got is a lot faster than Eno. And so I would probably if you put Andy in there um just on special teams to help protect more, I don't know. I mean I think that's fair. No? He returned a, a kickoff uh against the Lions. He he looked fine, that being Isabella. I don't think they trust him in a big game. I don't think anybody period. wants, period. You can do that in the fourth quarter. Well, what, of the if Ma- what if Rondale Moore is a little bit banged up? You're still going to put him in on special teams? Uh, if he's if he's good enough to play, I think he. I don't think they want a cold Isabella out there. On you you won't put him in there unless he's unless he's able to get it done. Because you want you want you don't want to risk him trying to protect himself and then fumbling the ball or giving the ball up or making it worse. So they, they'll use somebody else if Andy's not on if he's not on the fifty three man roster or the forty six man roster. If he's not on that roster, then he won't be factored. But more than likely, um, look, the, the kid got a lot. But there's so many things we're saying on this on we're saying that just doesn't go well for a receiver to be effective in NFL. Mental drops, can't handle the big lights. None of that you want on your football field. Abs- you don't even want that on the field because you're not you're not helping us. If I throw the ball to you, I can't trust you're going to catch it. If I get the ball to you, I can't trust you're not going to keep it and you might fumble it. You might not even be in the right spot. You might bump off AJ from having a 100% touchdown that I thought would have been the right play. You're small enough to get pushed from the numbers all the way to the guy that's passing out water. So these are things that just like, no, either you're going to be the dude or not. We're chasing a name that has already been removed by Rondell Moore. And I agree with you guys. We're not using Rondell perfectly, but until he gets to that point, this offense does not fit him. I'm saying this honestly and respectfully because he can go someplace else and be spectacular because they'll find a way to get him the ball with when they, where they won't have a D hops or AJ Green or Christian Kirk or James Conner or Chase Edmond and all these names I just said. I ain't even and hurt hurts. I'm like these guys are just so much better, and we're not even like that's not even a conversation on levels. They're, he's not on that level yet. So yeah. when he get there. I wish the best for him. At the end of the day, I, I just I, I feel like we're all kind of dancing around the main point. It all comes down to Cliff and schematics, yeah, and and how they're using personnel. And you know, for the lo- longest time, the bailout was D Hop. Yeah. Well, when D Hop goes away, what are you using? How mm-hmm. are you using them? And last game against the Detroit Lions, you got exposed big time, Cliff. Yeah. You got to come with it this week. Yep. You have to. I would like to see a little more of Chase Edmonds, maybe catching passes out of the backfield mm-hmm. and get him a little more involved. He looked so nice last week. God, yeah. He nice. Yeah. And I hope I, James Conner's status, I think, um, I, I don't think he's really in his status has improved in terms of injury because I saw, I didn't look at the injury report, but I did get, he's on my fantasy team. I did get a drop down from uh, healthy to questionable. So I'm assuming that he still has that nagging injury. And so who knows when he'll be back at full strength, but, um, James Connor is still a beast. I would pick him over Chase Edmonds all day, but they're, they're, they're good at different things. And Cliff has an opportunity to do more creative things when it comes to Chase. Agreed. Uh, I think Chase sees 15 touches on Saturday night. He looked good against the lions. And I think that game got away from them, and the run game did as well. I think big bounce back game for Chase. All right. Any final thoughts before we move into our winners and losers about this game? Saul thinks it's going to be a blowout in the Cardinals' favor. I think it's going to be a tight one. I really do. Um, I'm hoping that I hope that it's a tight one, and that we come out with a win. We the last couple of minutes of a lot of football games, we stunk it up. We didn't know what we was doing. I hope that it's tight so we can feel like we can understand what it feels like to have to play four quarters of real football and finish a game. Because anytime we've had that moment, we haven't done that. And this is the time of the year where you really start to feel these moments where, you know, the pressure's on the table and you got to have four, you got to have four quarters of football because no one wants to go home. Everyone's trying to get in. And once they get in, that's another check and it's another opportunity because you don't know what's going to happen. The NFL can flip right now with COVID protocols and COVID situations. Everything can flip. Your starting quarterback not might not be playing. He might be playing. Your coach might be coaching. He might not be coaching. So if you just get in, the scenario might be beneficial to you. So my last thoughts on it. Okay, Johnny. <laughs> I think they lose. I don't. I'm not optimistic at all, especially if Rodney doesn't play. 
Uh, the Colts are likes you, Johnny. Are, are be, hey, man, I want this team to do well. I don't, I, I don't, I don't want to be the bad guy. I don't want to be the Grinch of the show. But at the end of the day, here's what's going on. The Cardinals have looked like trash the last two weeks. They don't have DeAndre Hopkins or J.J. Watt. Those were two, two integral parts of this team. Until Kyler, you got to show it to me. Until I see it from Kyler, December football, when it matters, national stage, go out and ball out. I'll eat all the crow next week. Cook it up for me. I'll eat it. But I got to see it first. I'm with you on that. Uh, if I just had to pick, I would say that the Cardinals are going to lose this game until they show otherwise because everything I thought I knew about them has gone to, down the drain. Yes. And I would love for them to prove me wrong, just like Johnny, basically echoing everything that he just said. Um, again, with, with the Rodney Hudson injury, especially if Rodney Moore isn't out there as well. I mean, if you guys have those two guys out there, which – Cliff Kingsbury might be optimistic about it, but you never know. You absolutely never know. He could go out there, try to practice, and then, uh, you know, slide backwards. So, unfortunately, I don't think the Cardinals are going to be able to stop the bleeding on Christmas Day. And I think uh, I think it's going to be another loss for them. You sound so sad about it. Yeah, man, I was just like, <laughs> you know, I almost you know. patted you on the back right there. Yeah. God I mean, I just sort of like envision it in my head. It just didn't look great. didn't feel great. I know. that's You know, (laughs) that's the part where I think what you said last week was so telling to all of us was the fact that you just don't know what your team is. You don't know who your team is. And when you thought you had a beat on who the Cardinals was, you don't have that beat anymore. And that's the sad part because you could say your defense is going to do this and then Byron Murphy is going to get some picks or Buda Baker is going to come down and – Secondary was going to be, you know, the, the name of, you know, they, they were going to be the catalyst to our defense winning. And then now we don't even, they got murdered the last couple of weeks, which looked horrible. And then offensively. So I, I agree with you. And it's sad. It well, is a sad moment. And health wise, we thought, I think when, when after the bye, and then when, when DeAndre and Kyler both uh, were healthy again, we we're like, the Cardinals are getting healthy at the right time. This is great. They're like the healthiest since, team in the league. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, it's been like one injury after another, and Alfred, and I mean, this, the injuries keep piling up and they're trending in the wrong direction when it comes to that. Saul's making his own candy. How is oh my it? God. Hey, he's he's is it whipping good? up. He's, he's getting ready to eat crow and he's whipping spoons. up some I didn't delicious. Dip, so I brought spoons for everybody. It's good. But this was a, a, a Christmas gift. By the one and only Cheerson Sosel. Oh, so well, Saul loves like tahine spicy candy, I and so I bought him a yes. kit to make his own. Yes, and he just just did. I what did. did you only use the lifesaver gummies? Right, I only use the lifesaver gummies. I think I put a little too much of this chamoy, but that's okay. Just have, have pass one it in. along. Take one, pass it along. Yeah. <laughs> are we gonna do winners and losers? Yeah, we are. I'm actually before that. I'm uh, I'm gonna tell you guys about okay. the, the DraftKings Sportsbook app, but first I'm gonna try this. You ain't gonna tell this us looks, how to eat that. This looks interesting. This looks like right something my kids would make. Oh yeah, it's delicious. I like I said, I think I had a little too, too much chamoy. Yeah. But I I have a, I had a little too much on my spoon. The Very good. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> For the audio only episode, you're gonna love this. I know, right? Uh, what's Why do you called? make that face? Why'd you put your own spoon back in there? <laughs> oh my Johnny, God. I, didn't do, I didn't do the thing with my my. I didn't put the spoon in my mouth. I took what's the can that, off the What's spoon. the people that do the um double dip? The sound of oh, the sound yeah. effects. ASMR. The, yes, yeah, ASMR. ASMR. Yeah. There's like a phobia of people chewing, and it's called like misophonia. Yeah. Like, should we put a disclaimer <laughs> on this? Uh, very good. A little, yeah, a little too much of the chamoy or however you say it, but very good. Hey, Pablo put a nice comment on the screen. Oh. Mainly about me, so I want to read it. By the way, don't forget, I'm Johnny's biggest fan. Well, welcome, Pablo. A uh, fan of everyone on the show. Hopefully you get Thanks. to meet you guys soon. Well, Pablo, Thanks, hell Pablo. yeah, brother. Come to the tailgate, man. Yeah, yeah love Christmas to hang Day. with you. Um, all right, DraftKings Sportsbook app. Then we're getting into our winners and losers. If you download the DraftKings Sportsbook app, use the promo code PHNX, but a dollar run. Any team to score in a game, if they score, you score, you're going to get $100 in free bets. You can also get skin in the game with the same game parlays. The more likes you add, the more money you can win. Best of all, DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable, and you can deposit and withdraw your cash whenever you want. That is why we use it here on the PHNX Cardinals podcast. All right, guys, winners and losers of the week. Anyone want to start us out? I will crush the losers right now. Okay, losers first. Uh, loser is Jim Harbaugh. I mean, the Ravens is playing the Green Bay Packers. You got a chance. You you, you got a backup quarterback and Henley. He he gets them down. 
John Harbaugh? Jim? I said Jim. Jim is at Michigan. John. Hold on one I second. I was like, no. well, that's they're, they're doing really well for themselves. Uh, well, I mean, well, <laughs> John, Har- John Harbaugh. <laughs> yeah, my bad. Uh, John Harbaugh, look, just everyone wants to go for the, the two, and everyone's going for fourth down right now. And analytically, I hear your conversation, but I think it sucks because you're not playing. The players are playing. And so when you see the players, the players could actually, you can look in their face and say, they might, they're, they're probably okay with going for, going into half, going into overtime. And I think just not going in overtime versus the Green Bay Packers at home, you shit on yourself. I mean, you give yourself, you, 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 you go down the football field and everything it takes to get into the end zone, you get there and then you decide to go for two. I just don't see the analytics in it when you're at home and you got a chance to kind of make something happen. Fourth down, scoring two points is extremely hard. It's not easy unless you got the team at a disadvantage and you don't have that because it's the Green Bay Packers. Kick the field goal, put yourself in a position and go forward and give your fans and your players another sense of a quarter. Of course, maybe you're just fearful and you don't believe in the fact that your defense can stop. You don't want to take the chance on the 50-50 toss. And so you don't want to give Aaron Rodgers, I just, screw that. Screw that. I, I just, I think that's a loss and I think that would have been a hell of a, a great win if they would have went in overtime, and I'm, that's my mic, I'm, I'm dropping it. Jim uh, and John, the whole family. The whole family. The whole Harbaugh family. <laughs> um, my up. loser of the week, and I hate to do this, but uh, to me was was Kyler. I just I was very disappointed in, in the way he he not only performed, but um, just his overall demeanor. <clears throat> I think it, it needs to improve. I think he knows it needs to improve. Hey, a lot of people crapped all over him this week. Yeah. Um, and and a lot of it is deservedly so. Um, so I think he'll rebound and he needs to come back with it. And, you know, that's that's kind of my loser of the week. Yeah, it was it was Kyler's probably worst week on social media since maybe he's he's been in the NFL. I mean, he, he, the Monday narrative yesterday was Kyler is not a leader. And Mike Silver's on Colin Cowherd talking about how they've got internal locker room problems because he's an introvert and this, that and the other. And. So, I mean, we'll see how we respond. Uh, a little bit lighter note, uh, I have maybe my biggest loser of the year. Leah, could we go to the TikTok video of this woman doing a TikTok video? Oh, I thought it was Jackson. Dur- during her, her kid having RSV in the hospital. And I hate this generation. I'm sorry if you're a part of it. But <laughs> this, this kind of garbage, first of all, my kids have had RSV. It's terrible. My son was born early. If I ever saw anybody doing this at the hospital, I would report them uh, for t- child endangerment and they would be taken away. But in all seriousness, that that is awful. Please get that get that out of here, youth of America. I'm already skeptical of Twitter or t- TikTok, and that makes me want to delete the app oh off my, my phone. Oh, my goodness. I think, I think every app has its plus and minuses. I think TikTok can be educational and really entertaining, but sometimes... Uh, that generation, which I'm not a part of either, yes. uh, just takes it a little bit too far. Um, real quick before I get to my loser, was it Jacob who asked why Mikhail Bridges was talking about the Cardinals uh, stinking? Well, first off, he's a Rams fan. So he naturally, regardless of whether or not the Suns have a history prior to him getting the team and their success in the last two in, in a bubble stretch there, uh, so that's why I, people have been not not knowing that Mikhail is a Rams fan have been bring, continuously bringing that up uh, as if he's just like sitting there just just bashing the Cardinals. Well, he's always I, I, I love the, the 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 logistics of some of these things where you draft player A to City B and now they have to be all about City B. Yeah, right. right. Like, right, could you right. imagine if any of us got a job in another city? All of a sudden, that means I can't be a Cardinals Suns fan. Like now, I have to be a Sixers fan or a shitty Eagles fan. Like, yeah, no, I'm not doing that. No, I mean, or you can be. See, I'm still a Browns fan, but the thing is, is like, it's not like the Rams. They're in the same division, so like, I could very much still be a Browns fan. And for aside from maybe one game a week, has absolutely nothing to do with the Cardinals. But nobody would expect Mikael Bridges to all of a sudden be a Cardinals fan because he plays here. So, hey, Mikael, how many championships you got? Shut up. <laughs> How about that? How about that? How many well, we want him to win. Hang on, hang on. How, many win. Win. How many Rams got? Shut I up. love Mikhail. How many Rams got? I'll wait. Shut up. Thank you. Move on. Shut up with all that. The Rams have won a championship. What are you talking about? But him. With him and him. Him. 
bragging like he done thirty three. At least he's that. been to the championship. No. That's true. Well, well, we've been Last there too. Last year, we've been there too. I wait. Thank that you. Same shit. We've been there. Sense at Frank, all. No, it doesn't well, make you've sense. You've been at there. All. I think it's perfectly fine, Mikhail. He's a very nice child, and um, I like he when plays people well for for your guys. I mean, I'm assuming everybody here's Arizona sports fans. He plays well for your other team. I liked it. I because it's like the Suns have earned all the respect. Yeah. They got crapped on real. for an entire year, and they went to the finals, and they're the best team again this year. Like the Cardinals, I like they're my team. They're my ride or die. They would be very fortunate to have the kind of run of success the Suns are, are having. We we hope the Cardinals get to that point. The Suns are the darling of the Valley for a reason because they they were two wins away from winning a title. This team has cannot get to the playoffs. They they have shit the bed every opportunity the last two years to get to the post. Just get get to the playoffs. So no, I, I'm I'm all for throw all the shade at them so then they can just wake up and maybe win a game. Also, for Pablo talking about me being a Browns fan, you can't help where you were born and raised. Okay. Sometimes it's just in your blood. And for anybody to be able to make fun of a Browns fan, like, uh, they're one of the sorriest franchises in that there is. So, like, you think I want to be a Browns fan? It's just how it happens. Yeah, it's like, sure. you think I want to like Applebee's boneless wings? Sometimes it's just how it happens. Do you think happens. she wants to host a show with yeah, me? No, dude, it just has to happen. It has to happen. I, I mean, mean, a lot of things in life aren't fair. <laughs> it's true. It's not fair. <laughs> but also, Jacob, yes, Arizona is going to win the national championship. Fair down. <laughs> winners um oh i didn't even say my loser okay. but um we can also skip it over i was just gonna say um all of sports right now because COVID is uh hitting it hard and yeah. everything is sucking right now and we are in a uh 2.0 situation that i never thought that we would be in so that is my loser Bumbo. that's kind of unfortunate because my winner is Something that's also <laughs> being <It's COVID. laughs> it's is movie theaters because we went and saw Spider Man yesterday. It was awesome. If you haven't seen Spider Man Far From Home, it made two hundred sixty million dollars at the box office. Um, but yeah, the pandemic is likely to crap on movie theaters. Hopefully, they don't have to shut down again. A bunch of people losing their jobs. But Spider Man you know was great. You know what movie I saw recently that, that I loved? House of Gucci. Oh, was that oh good? yeah, I heard that was pretty good. Yeah, oh my good. god, it's so good! Like, do you guys know any of the storyline of the Gucci family? Mm, no. I had no idea. I love history, <laughs> and I only, I, I only like movies and books that are either nonfiction or based on true stories. Yeah. And this is based on a true story, and it is fascinating. Yeah, fun fact: Far from Home or No Way Home is also based on a true story. So, <laughs> Doctor Octopus comes back from the <laughs> Sam Raimi Spider-Man movies. Oh, it was stop. unbelievable. Just stop. Just stop. Also, Just William Defoe's Green Goblin. Full stop. Oh, oh my god. god. Okay, so your winners movie theaters? Wait, what? I thought you said that that they're gonna die. Well, I thought they were dead. Or and the then, movie, the Spider-Man yeah, movie. Yeah, well, that, that can be my winner. Okay. It was great. It lived. It probably exceeded expectations for me. House of I, Gucci, watch it. I also don't feel like this is this is 2.0. Like with the pandemic, myself, I feel like I think we're just learning more about this new variant. And from what, from all accounts, from medical experts, right? It's it's far more infectious but far less debilitating. Mm -hmm. And I think the leagues are starting to figure it out. Like, wait, I think some of the the measures that we had last year maybe don't apply this year. So they have to kind of, you know, all the college basketball leagues right now are going back to the drawing board and saying, listen, we have to, we have to kind of maneuver a little bit because this isn't as significant as it used to be. Um, so uh, maybe, but hopefully. we still saw games postponed and mm -hmm. canceled in like every league at every level yeah. or whatever in every sport. But so. you saw what the NBA did. They had all these cancellations and then they're like, well, hold, hold, hold. Uh -huh. let's back up. And now they're like, nah, just find more players. Yeah. <laughs> so, it's crazy. Well, the NFL is basically like, if you're vaccinated and asymptomatic, we ain't going to touch you anymore because we're getting the season in. Fair or not, whether you think that's the right decision, the NFL, no. Feels like that that that's a risk they're willing to take right now, and some stadiums aren't allowing. I know the you know, State Farm Stadium's not doing this, but there are other stadiums that do not allow uh, unvaccinated people in the stadium. So we'll see if that becomes a thing uh, league wide. All right, my winner is the Coyotes because, as our own Craig Morgan of the PHNX Coyotes podcast tweeted out yesterday, Glendale City Manager confirms the Coyotes fulfilled a payment of about. $930,000 <laughs> by the deadline and also agree to future schedule of payments for the rest of the season. Quote, they've satisfied what we've asked for. The Coyotes won't be locked out of Gila River Arena. It's crazy. My winners. It's like when I miss my electric bill and I have to go, you know, and they're like past due payment 
from last month and then this month and they combine it together and you have to make a fat payment. Yeah. That's what that makes me think of. Yes. It's like nobody ever says thanks dad for keeping the lights on or mom for keeping the lights on you know what i mean right. like, well, just pay your bills right. just pay your bills sure. get that sucker on auto withdraw coyotes Come yeah on but now. at least they at least <laughs> they prevented absolute worst case scenario yeah, that we love being, to see chaos how awesome i know but that i really I, I honestly <laughs> i honestly think if that happened like they wouldn't stay in arizona like if they legitimately were locked out of Gila river arena there is nowhere else that they could really play, and I feel like that would be like the end of them no, in the Arizona. The NHL would have been like, "Dude, pay your bills." The NHL might have paid their bill. Yeah. Well, they've done it before. Sure. Yeah, they have. Yeah. They've done it once. You could do it twice. Oh my goodness! Oh, like great statement Good right point. there. Great Kylie's statement. like, "Yeah, I was saving some money going to a <laughs> pandemic bubble." <laughs> Hell Thanks, yeah! <laughs> uh, uh, my right. winner is me. <laughs> <laughs> when, this, when this stuff happens this is when we know that frank did not come prepared. see she got no see watch okay so honestly since the la since the cardinals have lost the last couple of weeks one of our uh guys in the earlier chat stated and he says frank how you loving this tattoo right now honestly i still love my tattoo the winner is me because i love the tattoo no i'm just being honest because i didn't get the tattoo because we were i mean it was just because we were winning i kept the tattoo to keep my word because of what cliff had done and showed he could do. We were seven and zero at the time. So if you want to hold it to the, you want to hold me to the fire, then realize what I did it for. And the idea was that I did it for Cliff because he had shown great improvement, vast improvement in his coaching skills, his uh, how he commanded the offense, what he had done to change and move guys around. It wasn't a still stalemate offense he had done in college. So <clears throat> this year he showed, uh, you know, just what I thought was on the table for that. And then he went to San Francisco and won against a team that I thought he wouldn't, he wasn't going to do without the players that would be normally on the team. There was no Kyler. There was no AJ. There was no blah, 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 blah. But guess what? The tattoo still rang on my arm right now. This is actually Saul's first time seeing it in reality. No, you were here. Were you here? Oh, you saw I saw you saw it on TV. Oh, so I saw it on TV. But in, you know, that's to me, I feel like I'm not doing anything. It's not, it's not a curse. It's a great thing. And the idea is that I believe in the coach that we have. I think that he has a lot of great weapons. He has to use his weapons. And not only that, the weapons he has has to perform when they're giving a task. And we had, we had, we had, we did not see that, but I love the tattoo. I think that it's uh it's not it's something that represents the Cardinals. And hopefully going forward, like Johnny would say, that this is a team that will sign him to a long term contract, hopefully. And he's that these last couple of weeks will determine that. Now, someone asked me, Will I take the tattoo off or change it if he if he's not here if something happens that's totally absolutely crazy and we just lose all the last three games. Guess what? No. I'm not because the purpose of getting it was for the seven games and what he did against the San Francisco 49ers. And so that makes okay, me Frank. the winner. Frank was on TV last night defending his tattoo as well. You'll you'll tell anybody. Yeah, I'll tell anybody. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I'll tell anybody. Look, this um it's a great season, man. We we haven't been here. It's just it's it's it's, it's definitely we've we've wet the bed the last couple of weeks with opportunities, you know, to kind of become a lot easier. The question is, is this team is in a matrix? Do they believe that they need to stay hungry or are they chewing on the pill that makes them feel like they can just chill? When they thought they was getting in the playoffs, did they take the chill pill? When there was mm -hmm. 10 wins, did they say, you know, we can just shut it down? Maybe. And yeah. that might been, you know, that might have been the case. And they shut it down. Everyone stopped coaching, calling on, whatever, whatever. But it's a lot of football to play. And guess what? This is one thing I do know about the NFL. If you don't show up, you're going to get your ass whipped and it's just going to look bad. That's 100% correct. You get ass whipping, and that's bad. I hate to say it like that, but that's My, <laughs> the worst uh... thing you can feel. My winner of the week is uh, a young man in Ohio who chased down a thief for stealing the purse of an 87-year-old woman, 27-year-old Deshaun Presley, mm -hmm. and beat this dude's ass and waited for the cops to show up. And then they arrested the guy, and he got recognized by um, the, the police department for his efforts. Um, he, got, he, he literally made a citizen's arrest. And uh, so Deshaun Presley, 27 years old. Deshaun! Yeah, Deshaun. Deshaun. Good Deshaun. job! Deshaun. Good thing you can run without blowing a hamstring. Yeah. Good well, the job. Other, well, the other dude was like 60. <laughs> <laughs> he was like... <laughs> a 60-year-old was stealing Deshaun an 80-year-old. Deshaun turn like pro zones. <laughs> yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah, I know, so. crazy, right? Yeah. We're at that point, man. People. We're What's the losers because we had to deal with the Cardinals update, the Gambo Chandler Jones oh, Twitter Jesus. interaction. Oh my goodness, that was depressing. That put a that was the perfect cherry on that Sunday against. Well, the it showed Lions. just exactly how frustrated this team was. 
They were out of their minds frustrated. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he got hacked, though. That's. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. Which one? Okay. Who got hacked? Chan- Gambo Chan- or Chan- Chan- Chandler? Chandler, got Chandler oh, tweeted oh. that he that he was uh, sorry that that was an awful thing to say, and then he got hacked. Uh, he got hacked by Mark Dalton, who told him, "Yeah, oh, let's okay. scrap that tweet." Yeah, yeah exactly. All right, well, guys, it was fun. Uh, Saul, good to have you back. Yes, thank you. Welcome you can back, hang man, out with man. all of us, minus me, out on the tailgate party on Saturday. We hope you will join us. Minus Johnny, too, because he's just going straight to the stadium. I will be at the stadium. Okay. And so I you will can just be- come hanging with Frank and myself. <laughs> yes. You guys can hang out with Saul and Frank at the tailgate party, the two guys that, and Leah and Shane and others. Uh, so we would, we would be thrilled to have you guys out there on Christmas day. If you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, wherever you get your podcasts, we'd be thrilled if you would do that as well. And follow us on Twitter at PHNX underscore Cardinals. We'll see you later. Merry Christmas.